Ronnie Vale, four-wheeling at westernaustralia.com and welcome to a very special episode of Modified and let's waste no time and get our special guest in. Andrew. Hey Dean, mate. How are you, mate? It's always good to see you. Yeah, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, thank you. Finally get your Overland... Beast. Beast, yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, the Troopy. Yeah. And Modified. Uh. All right. Well, do you want to tell the audience uh, the make and model and the specifications? Because this is the 2017 version. Yeah. VDJ so... Troop Carrier, which is the Land Cruiser 78 series. It's the van, two-door, three-door if you count the back. And it's a bit of a cult following in this country about with Troopies, actually. Most Apparently, definitely. Apparently, I'm a legend. <laughs> All Troopie All Troopie are owners are legends. I can't like that, but... Um, the 2017 model has the uh, the big lump, which is improving the, the performance of the intercooler. The engine, they changed the injectors and I think derated it slightly, but the balance is you're getting the same amount of power as you did with the previous model. Yes. It's slightly better fuel consumption. More I don't know economical. how much. It's, sli mm. it's like, yeah, a little bit more. How much, I don't know. Um, and apart from that, it just looks cooler because it's got a big lump on the bonnet. Yes, I agree. Um, they put uh, auto front hubs, replace the manual ones, um, which I like. I'm used to them, but some people don't prefer the, prefer the old ones. So that's but what you're used whatever. to using in Africa? Uh, yes, they've had the auto hubs there for uh, since 2008. Okay. Yeah, in all the 70 series, had the, had the auto locking hubs. Um, and uh, other than that, it's, it's, and, the, and they've put in l lousy seats. <laughs> Your seats are still better than, you know, the previous no, version? No, I don't think so. You don't because really? my yeah. previous troop carrier that I built in Africa had the same seats as the workmates. And I could sit in those for a day after day, no problem. Interesting. I can't with this. All right, we'll I talk, don't know why. We'll talk a bit more about that when you get to the cab. Just, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's going to give me a question because I was looking at getting these seats online. From don't get these. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, there are better. There are better options for probably less money. Okay. Yeah, that's what I reckon. So before we get into this, there is one more thing actually. You have the better gearbox. Yes, I'm sitting at about 2,000 RPM at 100 kilometers an hour, and apparently that's a drop of about 12, about 200 RPM or 200 something yeah. like a 250. 200, is that 300 right? ish. Yeah. yeah, about that. Um, over the, and that's probably why the economy is better on the long run. So, yes, and it's a little quieter than it would have been. Excellent. Yeah. All right, let's waste no time and we'll get straight into dissecting your troopy. All right. And this episode is going to be very different to your regular uh, modified episodes. So, there won't be so much Q&A at the end of this because the whole build, the whole vehicle we are talking about behind me is all going to be Q&A as we go because there is so much uh, value in content and knowledge that we are going to get from this vehicle owner, Andrew St. Pierre White. Bar work in Australia, do you agree that you needed more here than probably other places in the world? I don't know yet. You don't know yet? No, because I, I was recommended to me in Australia, you need the sidebars, you need these fender bars. And I have yet to get to a situation oh, the fender in, bars. A, yeah. a, a, that are in Australia where I thought, oh, thank goodness, I've got fender bars. So I'm looking at the amount of weight that is and thinking, well, do I really need them? But I'm told by a lot of people here, you'll need them. So we are specifically okay. referring to these. Specifically the, the bars. bars. Yes. This, it's the same all over the world. Same you have wild animals world. around. I've only actually used this twice in my travels where it's actually protected the vehicle and none of them very bad, but it's been there and it's protected the vehicle and I've been able to continue my trip. And yes. that's the, you know, obviously here it's, it's a rhubarb. It's called a rhubarb for a reason. So, you know, but it's around the world it's, um, and uh, also good for mounting stuff on like the uh, Warnsey on uh, 12,000 pound. Your recovery insurance policy? Which is my recovery. I'm not big on winches. I haven't had winches on all the vehicles that I've owned. And, but I do a lot of solo traveling and I figured you need just that little bit of comfort level. Yeah, just, I mean, know. it's all like peace of mind as well. Yeah. I guess. Exactly. Especially in your case, because oh, look, I wouldn't say to all people that they need a winch, However, you being a specific solo traveller, um, in my view, you, you will need a winch in this country, being so remote as you can get. Yeah. It's the day you need one that you really need one. Yes. That's the, that's the challenge. Yeah, it's a bit like insurance. Your hopes yeah. will never have to use exactly. it. Exactly. But if you need it, yeah. 
It's there. Yeah, it's there. And it works. I have tested it. Yeah. <laughs> you spooled it in? <laughs> yes, exactly. Your side steps? Standard ARB steps. Um, they offered me the package and they look strong. They're well, very well mounted. The powder coating, I think, is a bit weak. It's all come off from underside. It's all, it's all been worn away. Yeah, it doesn't um, And this powder coating, I think, could be a better quality, only that it marks very easily. But, it, look, the ARB stuff is good stuff. It, it is good stuff. It's they're, not, they're not top of the pile stuff. because they are producing very good stuff. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, so you, uh, paintwork underneath with all the stone chipping on the gravel roads and stuff here, it's, yeah, it's very unavoidable unless you get like that hammer tone kind of paint or yeah. the rhino line, yeah. line X or something. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Write this stuff down. Uh, you have a bash plate under here, which is obviously part of the... It's part of the bar. It's part of the winch. Part of the yeah. bar. Yes. Um, recovery Do you think point? that's adequate? I've got an ARB recovery point. And if I look at that, that is overkill, if ever there was one. But it that's is... where I would like overkill, actually, with yes. recovery points. And that's a nice piece of kit. 100% agree. You definitely want overkill on recovery points. Yeah. Um, the only thing I don't like about the ARB recovery point, because I have one as well, yes. is you only have one side. Yes. You don't have two sides. Yes. That's the only thing. I so, agree with you. I so absolutely. Make one for both sides. Absolutely and then agree with you. People have an option. Both sides. I notice you don't have a steel guard under your radiator. I don't. Is it something you're... Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Investigating it now. Because that's... That, I thought you were going to say that. Yep. Yeah. And it doesn't actually need to extend very much further than this. No, and it it's doesn't. it's about this much. It's about this much too short. Mm. This. Even just to protect like that radiator. flat plate or something. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I'll do something with that. You have no lights, no light bar, no spotlights. I know no. you avoid... Uh, if I was going to put a spotlight on here, it would be a very small one. I'm very conscious of the of the efficiency of the engine cooling and big bar, big lights here do affect the engine cooling. It's it's impossible to avoid. Yes. But how much does it affect, and how much does it increase the underbonnet bonnet temperatures? So my thoughts are, if you've got particularly if you've got a battery under the bonnet, which I don't have, uh, you've got to keep those underbonnet temperatures low because it destroys the batteries. Or, you yeah. know. And big lights can affect it and do affect it. All right. If I was to put a light bar on this vehicle now, I would investigate putting one up there, but it depends on how much reflection I get from the bonnet. So I am doing some, a light work because I avoid driving at night, but sometimes you just cannot avoid it. You, you can't avoid and it. And you need good lights. So mm. I, that's part of my phase two of this build is to put, is to put lights. Good lighting on. Yeah. Okay. You have a sun visor there too, which is actually, yes. you know, a light bar is probably a good option for you because it's not going to reflect on uh, this too much. This is what I'm thinking, that the sun visor might actually solve that problem completely. I think it will. Yeah. It may also cast a shadow though, so are you thinking about getting small lights and yes. a light bar? Yes, to fill the shadow. Ah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. But you, those, they're so bright, they're so potent some of them. Mm. That big on here to fill and that to spread, I, I, you know, I think that that combination will be more than adequate. You'll notice you don't have your communications on the front. I just don't like, Not I just don't I. like it. Mm. And I, you know, so it's, per, it's purely a personal thing. So I've got my, um, the uh, UHF radio aerial there and my flag there. Yeah. I never have anything in front. And the antenna that high is really good performance. Good I've got a fantastic ground plane of that flat roof. Mm. So that is a high performance now. It's far more high, you know, uh, I, I think. Yes, well, look, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. The thing with bar work is it's convenient to mount stuff. Very. And it, it's like an industry standard. They want to mount it here. Your battery's here. Let's run short cable to here, run it into there. No one really wants to run it through the top unless you ask for it. Yes. But I would advise anyone, you're going to put a radio in, spend the extra, you know, 50 if bucks, If you can, bucks, put whatever. it on your roof rack put and run roof. the cables down. It's just a little bit better. Exactly. And, uh, and to me, the biggest thing was not having this thing in front of my face. Yeah, it is a bit annoying too. It yeah. was. Mm. It does look cool, but it's, it's annoying. Mm. Tires and suspension. Now we'll start with your tires. And look, let me just point out that you are associated with BF Goodridge. Yes. However, that said, um, for people who don't who don't know your, your channel yet or know of you or right. know your background yet, <clears throat> I know that you have used these tyres for eight or nine years? Since 2009. 2009. And you've been associated with Bev Goodrich since? 
Well, on a very low level for since about 2013, 2012, and then actually as their, I'm now their global brand ambassador. Okay. Uh, so far now for one year. When I began this relationship with them, that I would stop reviewing and doing tire comparison because I have a. It would be unfair for viewers to expect me to be unbiased because yes. I am supported with them. Yes. But I mean, using them for eight years and basically, if I honestly, if I, mm. if I wasn't sponsored by them or you know, they weren't an underwriter, I would still use their tires because they've served me so well. Tire size, you <clears throat> have gone for a narrower tire and we have had this conversation before. Yes. We were having a discussion and yeah, I agree that the narrow tire is better for the sand. Mm -hmm. Less rolling resistance, less, you know. Um, so how have you found them so far, like being a narrower tire? Uh, I prefer narrow tires, I always have. Mm. And I'm about to put wide tires on it. Purely so I can do a direct comparison, oh, handling okay. all of the all the things. But I'm a, I just prefer narrow tires. On sand, uh, the ideal tire for me is something that is square. That the sidewall is the same height as the tread, is the same height as the sidewall, is the same as the width. Yes. That to me is the optimum. Optimum tire should be square-ish, if not a little bit oblong, a little bit tall. So these are standard rims. They're the stock rims on the the new Land Cruiser. Uh, workmates and trippies. It's not a split. Thank goodness they've got rid of those awful split rims. Suspension? Uh, yeah, uh, we did quite a lot of fiddling to get it right and this thing has the most amazing ride. It, BP51 uh, shock absorbers, it's the first time I've ever used uh, this type of shock absorber and these can be adjusted in both rebound and compression, which has given me something else to think about if you think about it. I'm now driving along thinking, I wonder if that's right. <laughs> you know, it's that extra little thing in your motor that's going. And I've done quite a lot of fiddling to try and get them right. This thing's ride is absolutely amazing, actually. But it's Excellent. been quite a bit, quite fiddly to get it right. This, as good? they arrive in the- Three adjustments or? Uh, there are seven settings uh, zero to seven on compression, zero to seven on, on rebound. And oh, the way wow. it comes uh, out of the factory, it was slightly soft on the compression on the back. The front were almost perfect. So they work. And you just tweak them with the spanner? With well, the spanner. That piece there, that you rotate that piece there. Oh, wow. There's a little mark. You just oh, put yeah, it in compression there and, go, click, and rebound. Click. There it is there. Ah. Yeah. So they're holding the ride pretty well as well. Amazing. You pull some leaves out the back? Uh, it's a 600. A spring, but I took the main leaf, one of the, the secondary main leaf out. So it's now 400. 400. 600 was just too much. Yeah, too, and if too I, hard. If, honestly, 400 is not quite enough. <laughs> it's just, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. But 600 is just too much. So I've got to choose one, 400. And only when the vehicle is full, 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 full. Is that just a little down at the back? Not that it affects the handling particularly. It, it just looks just wrong. Sitting right slightly thing. back down. So 450 would be perfect, but, and then I could put air springs in. You know, I think to myself, you know, it's such a short distance where I'm full, 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 full of water, full, full of fuel. Mm. By the time the back tank is empty, I'm perfect. So I'm not gonna do it. We are now at the rear of the vehicle, the rear of the troop carrier. So Andrew, before we get stuck into the inside. Yes. Um, you, have a stock bumper at the stage. Yes. One tire. Yes. I know you carried two on the canning. Was one yes. on the roof? Carcass on the roof. Yes. Oh, Stuff it was a carcass. On, it no. was just carcass. Wasn't had no rim. Okay. Just in case. And I've been asked, if you if if you <laughs> be of good riches that good, why do you need two? It's like the but it's like the winch. It's yeah. like a little insurance, insurance. policy. Yes. It's just got peace of mind. Mm. So I will be putting two on because I actually do want two. All right, so I'm going to get a, I'm getting a, a it's, I've ordered it, rear bumper. It's a pretty traditional rear bumper double wheel carrier, but I've ordered it from a company called GobiX in South Africa. While Andrew opens up, uh, I'm going to bring my other camera inside. So please excuse the camera. I just don't want to miss anything because there is so much in here. On the back of the doors, this is pretty awesome. It's a very ordinary carrier and I just put two little hooks on it it's, there's nothing special about it That's at all. That's a DIY thing you've done there. Yeah, well this bit is DIY and this was from a regular store, regular camping store. 
And this is a little special. This is no longer made. It was made by a company called Picra in Germany. And I was at an outdoor show about three, four years ago. And I knew one day I'd own another Troopy. So I bought it. It is designed just for the Troopy door. It can't fit in anything else. It has a windbreak, very clever plastic hinges. They're, they're really quite clever. And a magnet. Also a magnet? Yes. So you open it by, oh, wow. yeah. It's just a magnet. That's cool. Oh, nice, eh? Quite clever, but they've stopped making them. So. Bit of a light is. here, which lights upwards. Okay, no, I've got a light. Uh, this is actually a, a, ah, a separate magnetic. light, a magnetic light, and I've got a, la a light lead, so I can put it absolutely anywhere. I've got plenty of lights, but that's just basically a spare one uh, in case I need it. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Um, Let's look at the other door first. It's just a piece of aluminium. I made it myself, and I've just got tools on it. Um, fire striker. These never need servicing, and they are very effective fire extinguishers. I've got three in the car. Um, this is pretty much um, self-explanatory. Nothing special about it. What is nice is this. It's a camp cover product, and this was the prototype they were making for troop carriers when troop carriers were first launched into South Africa. But they got the size of it wrong. But it's the perfect size for me. It's absolutely perfect size for me. So you can put it on here, you can put it on there, you can put it on here, and it just has my stuff that I need every every campsite I'll be at. I'll need almost That's everything. That's your everyday campsite yes. stuff. Yes. Easy to get to. Yeah. On this side, that's this, a cool side. I like do you know side. these? Do you know these? Yeah, seatbelt cutters. I've, I've seen them. They're made by. It's called the Raptor. It's made by Leatherman. It's the nicest thing Actually, in the world. Do you know where <laughs> I've seen it? Yes. In your video. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, torch, uh, a little hatchet. Uh, this is a power box that I made myself with a monitoring system to monitor batteries. I made it myself. It's very rudimentary. It was like twelve dollars on eBay. Uh, it's not high tech but I have then plugs um, and a switch here for my compressor. I have okay. a switch for my compressor. My air system is interest interesting, by the way. My compressor is actually behind there. So the compressor is hidden away. And uh, it's a double ARB compressor, which is really fast. Really, really yeah, I've got the same on there. Yeah. They are really fast. I just want to point something out. You are making the most use out of light items. Yes. Compact bucket like this. You guys know these, these buckets, but they, they work. They don't take up any space. What's that metal thing there? This is my partner steel gas stove. Little wind deflectors, but I don't need them because I've already got wind already deflectors got wind here. Deflector there, yep. And the thing about this stove is that the flame, you can get a tiny little flame. It's so easy to adjust. So you can actually cook properly on it. So many camp yeah, stoves are so, it's either, you know, incinerate everything or off. Yeah, or <laughs> incinerate everything or blow out. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of the two. So this is, this is nice. They're handmade in um, Idaho in the US in small numbers. Take note of all this uh, camping goodies because um, you've tried and tested a lot of things. Yeah. And so a lot of this stuff is where you've ended up with things now. Normally as a result of something really annoying me, because if you want to annoy me, give me a badly, <laughs> you know my channel. Yes. <laughs> I rant about badly designed camping equipment. So most of what you'll find here is either I'm testing it or it works really well because I've already been through the mill and tested a whole lot of stuff and I'm now happy with the stove. So Andrew, inside here, the roof isn't very high. But I know you have something up here which you are going to open. You need to open that to sit inside, basically. Yes, you do. Let's do that. All right. I want to access it from the underside. So that's my bed. Okay, that's where I sleep. Oh, man. All right. So my tent's pitched, that's how long it takes. It takes the same length of time to close it up. I have ventilation and light in here, as I would do in a tent. And the beauty about this is, A, it's very fast, and B, the weather gets really lousy. I can just face the car under the wind and be warm and comfortable in here. You could, you could literally just jump over your center console and you, yes, don't, have, you don't have to get out of the car. 
Uh, no, you have to to open it because the clasps oh, are on yeah, the outside. Yeah. Okay. And wow. all of the ax of the cupboard space, storage space is accessible from the inside, apart from that long drawer. If I was going to make a meal inside here, which I wouldn't necessarily do, but if I was going to do that, I would just open that drawer, get my important stuff out, put it on here, close it, climb inside, and make myself. Because okay. I've got food in these drawers here. For example, that's food. Um, this is a, a long-term storage. Also, it's actually pretty empty right now. But it's, it's, you can carry a lot of food. There's a lot of storage space in this truck. Really lots. And you find that how you've set this up, you've got adequate storage space? Oh, more than adequate. More than adequate. I've got more than enough. Well, that's all you wanted, isn't it? Yeah. So then if you have a passenger that brings a bit more than you expected, yes. you got room. I've got to say, this is pretty cool sitting in here. This is... <laughs> it's like a room. You just converted so, your trophy. I can access that while I'm driving. I can access that little fridge. It's a it? Snowmaster. I think it's about 11 litres. And uh, it's designed for centre console use. Wow, that's a, that's a great narrow size. Yeah, designed for centre console use, but I haven't put it centre console because the Department of the Interior comfy console is so comfy that I didn't want to lose the comfy. But I can still just bend around, put my hand in, open that, and take out a ice cold Coke. And a VB for the evening. How, how do you like the VB, Andrew? It's not bad. <laughs> yeah? It's right. Yeah, it's... it's yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, there are a few very nice beers here, but I okay. haven't kind of hooked on the one particular one that I... Yeah. I used to drink VB. Did you? I don't like it anymore. You don't like it anymore? I do yeah. like other Australian beers, so I stop hammering me yes, about no, my Yes, don't asahi. comment like a million comments. <laughs> you, Philistine, you don't like VB anymore. <laughs> <laughs> in your export. I've got clothes and towels in there. This is something, uh, it is the perfect width, by accident, I have to say. It's made by Camp Cover. They recently, it's a South African company, they've recently come to Australia and um, it happens to be the exact, that's actually designed for the, uh, on, a, on a ute to actually attach to the back seat of a ute, a bench seat of a ute, that was what it was originally designed for. But now look at it, it's fantastic for clothes and towels and things like that. Um, I actually, actually got another one that I'm going to put here and all my clothes are going to be up there. Because I found on Canning Stock I had my bag of clothes and it kept on kind of Moving getting it in the way. Yeah. I'd rather that one be much smaller and the bulk of my clothes in here. Or I can just keep one just for dirty clothes. So I've got dirty clothes, just shove them in there. That is, that's a great idea because do you know what I do with my dirty clothes? Yeah. You know, because um, I've got four seats, and, oh, uh, five seater. Yeah. I'll stuff them in the wheel arches in the back because I have that issue too. So that's actually a great idea to have somewhere to put your dirty clothes. That's, I never even thought of that. I'll just stuff them in because when you're away for say more than a week, you don't put your dirty clothes in with your clean clothes. No. Because then everything stinks. Yeah. Campfire smell. Interesting. That's that's a great idea. So specific bags for your clothes on the inside. Mm -hmm. DIY stuff here. Yes. Uh, more to do with camera gear and lights. I take it. Yeah, my electrical system. I've got two AC inverters. Uh, one under the uh, over the dashboard. One there, and they basically feed here. I've got USB and two 10 volts or two 20 volts, and I can then charge batteries and plug in laptops in the evening, and it's all here. And if I need a battery, I just come here and grab a battery, take the old battery, shove it back in there, and it's done. Simple as that. That's for when I'm filming, uh, I want to go and film the vehicle so I can speak to the driver or drivers. Let's and when I've got them next to the camera, that's what the, the, the handheld is for. Okay. Um, and I've got the, the little GME, it's an Australian company. It's good stuff. Yeah, it makes some. Um, it makes some is nice. that the? Oh, it's a five water. Uh, yeah. Nice. So I got the three water. Okay. They're pretty good range. You only got three watts, hey? Yeah. You only got so three you're not as good mine. as me. No. <laughs> <laughs> fishing rods out of the way, dead space. Have you done much fishing in WA? None. None. I haven't even wetted a line yet. <laughs> well, we could. I've got stuff. I don't have any bait there. We could try with a lure or two, but. Yeah. Uh, you might get some herring here with a lure. All right. Yeah, I, I like, I'm not particularly good at fishing. <laughs> not am I. Okay, all right, fine then. Hey, this is lighting. Lighting is an interesting thing in this because these are made by Nightcore and I think they are the cleverest thing. Is that a lantern? Since, yeah, since a, a cheese toasty. Because uh, that very dull uh, at night, that actually gives a lot of light but doesn't blind you. It's, your eyes get used to it, so everything's got a kind of dull glow, but you, your eyes just adapt. I put Velcro on it, 
so I can stick it anywhere I like. Oh man. They do have magnets, so you can. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I can put that almost anywhere I like. And I've got light. I've got two of them. There's the other one, a yellow one. Okay, Did, tell, tell us what they're called again. because They're called Night Core L, that's Lima Romeo 10. Shall we move back inside and go through the rest? Yes. <clears throat> Electrical system might be interesting. All right, so what have we got here, Andrew? That is the thing, it's, it was an interesting idea. I've got an inbuilt system with two lead crystal batteries, they're 76 amp hour each, very high performance batteries, and they work extremely well. But, as an, but it was quite an expensive exercise putting them in, and I thought, well, let me test an alternative for people that might want to you know, convert a vehicle that they're using as a, da a daily driver and have a separate battery system in it. Okay. So, I, so that's what this is. It's, it's, it's got an 80 amp hour battery in it. It has a, a thousand watt inverter in it with all of the USB connections. And it can be charged with solar, charged with the battery, charged on mains, you decide. And it's portable and I've just strapped it down. And I'm actually just leaving it in the car because it's that insurance policy. When filming, as you know, you go out on a long trip. After a couple of days, that footage that you've got is worth more than the trip itself because it's such a lot of effort and time to get that footage. Yes. This is my backup battery for my computers, for my batteries and everything. And I just decided to leave it in the car. It works extremely well. And it is a viable option for somebody that doesn't want to actually put separate batteries in their vehicle and want something that they can take out and put in. My dual battery system, a main dual battery system is underneath the fridge. Okay. And those are the 270 amp lead crystal right. batteries with the Red Arc charger. So this basically powers all your, this is a backup and it powers all your laptops, your camera gear, all yes. that stuff. It packs, it, it, it powers that bit there. Oh, this section here? It powers here. that bit there. And it's a backup. And is, a, is my backup. And it's portable. And it's portable. And I can plug it into the rest of the car, should I need to, using that plug there. What size fridge have we got here? It's 57 litre, it's a Snowmaster, it's the dual door. So one half freezer, one half, uh, it's a little less than half freezer, other half fridge. And it has a remote, and you'll see the remote control underneath the, the dashboard there. That remote control I need to show you because I can see my fridge as it's working. It'll give me temperatures. I can set it from there. It's handheld. Notice the tub over here, and there's a... Is that your 20-litre jerry? Yeah, I, what I decided to do here is that the, the, the option was to actually have another drawer here. But look, I'm so glad I didn't because it's allowed me to do something here. I don't need to open the drawer. And my, my recovery kit. So that's recovery and that's recovery so it's easy to get to and right on top i've got spare gas tanks in there uh water purifiers i've got a cooking grid and that's my gray water tank 20 liter scepter uh, can and normally if i'm on a trip that's strapped down okay so that's your 20 liter that's your gray 20, water you're yes saying? so underneath here my 75 liter tank which is actually built into the vehicle 75 litre tank? 75 litre stainless steel litre. tank built into the vehicle, plus 20 litres for my grey water, plus 10, 10 litres behind my seat for emergency water, which I never touch. Back to the exterior of the vehicle, we have a Max Trax holder. Table. A table, yeah, doubles as a table. <laughs> the idea behind the design was one moving part, nothing to fall in the mud. That's pretty cool. That's pretty quick. And likewise, to put it back. And it's lockable. Ah, and you've got a double latch, right? So if you put four on, is that for the four? Then? Yes, it is. You move this pin there. You see the holes there? Yeah. You move that pin and that pin and that pin and that pin. And once you've done that, then this works. And it just clasps in there. Oh, because it's moved out. It's, be the whole thing is moved out. Yes. You see? Mm. And then you can put four on. That's clever. Mm. I am actually going to put four on. I was going to put another one of these on the other side, but I'm a bit conscious about weight. So for my Trans Australia and Trans Americas trip, uh, you can put four on. Put on four. Yeah. And the best part is. There we go. Table. Little mini kitchen. Ah, perfect. So you grab your cooker. Prepare your meal yep. here. Yeah. Light. Well, 
it is working. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to see. Um, and my uh, tire pump uh, inflator cord in there as well. It's all there as well. Because I always, uh, that, I mean, you use that so often that I just thought it'd be a good place to. There's my little mini kitchen. Uh, that's a hacking uh, saw. That's a saw. Uh, silky. That's like a, a silky. They're yeah. quite nice. Very familiar yeah. with them. Okay. Um, and nothing else. Just easy to get to. Coffee and milk and. Hotel. And cute little mug. <laughs> Give it a plug, Andrew. Give it a plug. Give it a plug. Okay. He asked for it. Uh, Forex Overland is the channel, and we do nice mugs and caps and shirts. shirts. And, and you can you can select the vehicle of your choice. See, Troopy, Range Rover Classic. There you go. And lots of vehicles. Lots, lots of vehicles. So we'll, we'll send you a we'll send you a, a seventy nine double cab. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. So you got the 79 double cab? I do. Excellent. In fact, it looks just like yours. Really similar. Brilliant. Really similar. Shadow on. Yes, uh, the uh, Alucab Shadow on. Uh, it's a good product. Uh, I would prefer an uh, awning if it was just a tad lighter. Because particularly with a troop carrier, it's quite a top heavy vehicle. Yeah. And you've got, got a tent on top as well. That's an extra 80 kilograms. So the Hercules conversion is an extra 80 kilograms con calculating what we take off and what we add. It's exactly 80 kilograms. Um, I don't know the weight of this, but it's probably about a 20, 25? close to 21, 21. 21, 22 kilos. So it's not light, light so, uh, but in terms of its spread, ease of use, fantastic. Yeah, I've uh, I had a... 270 awning before okay. and I've had plenty of normal standard awnings yes and the thing that I found is a 270 awning yes they're bigger they're bulkier they stick out more they're a bit more weight you use them all the time yes you pull up out it goes what I say about this kind of awning is they are perfect for those people that move camp a lot every mm. day and want quick shade but if you're set up on a beautiful beach like this and you decide right we're gonna stay here for a week it's the wrong awning to have because you have to move the car around to, to keep the, the because shot, the sun's yeah. doing this whereas there it would be better to get a couple of poles a nice big top and some pegs and just leave it there because then you can lower the one side as the sun moves over you just lower yeah. the one side you can't lower any side of this it's as it is mm. so that's, that's that i think that's a strong point when considering what kind of awning to put on these are great for quick and if you move camp a lot. They're also good for a but roadside. Not for roadside, but that's quick. Because a roadside, you're not going to pull that one out and peg it down. No. and you know. That's what they're for. Mm. They're not for setting up a really nice camp and you're going to stay there a week. I'm now going to rant, but in the opposite way. Okay. This is so cool. I've never had anything nearly this good in all the vehicles I've built. All right, I can access now. There's my fridge. Okay. And here are my shower controls. Uh -huh. Now the secret behind the shower controls, I'm gonna show you before I show you the shower curtain, because once the curtain's up, you can't see that. Yes. All right. You have bucket and tank, so you can- Yes. So I'm next to a river. I don't wanna use my precious, beautiful drinking water. I wanna use my river water. So I have a, 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 a 10 liter electrical powered boiler in the vehicle. I will turn it on 20 minutes before I arrive at a campsite. It uses 20 amps per hour. So if you're going to use it for a long time, it's a good idea to get the water hot while you're driving. Okay. So on your way to? On your way to. Okay, three o'clock, I'm thinking about, eh, we're going to be looking for a campsite within an hour. I just turn it on and leave it on. By the time I get to my campsite, 10 liters of really hot water. But now the bucket tank switch will decide where the cold water comes from because it mixes cold water from whatever source I want with the hot water from the boiler. I lower that into a river. I get all the water in the river. Okay. Bucket. Pump. Brilliant. So it takes 10 litres what's already in here. Yes. Heats it up. 10 litres from there. Mixes it. Mixes so it. I've got about 20 litres of shower water. Let's say it's 50-50 mix, give or take, hot, because that heats it up to well over 70. Okay. So, no, that, sorry, I'm wrong. That mixes that to 70. That mixes it to comfortable. 
Oh, okay. So, yeah, 70 degrees, comfortable. You can adjust the knob and you can decide to have a really hot shower or a cold shower. This would be so good for the beach. Hop in the water, come out, rinse off, jump in the car, off you go. And if there are lots of people on the beach, this is what you do. Oh yeah, now we come to the good stuff. <laughs> if it wasn't already good. <laughs> now the wind will blow it. The wind will blow this around a little bit. You can peg it down. There are ways of pegging it down. But you'll see now. It is pretty windy today too. Quite windy. Okay, so there you go. So you, you can see the little eyes at the bottom there to, to for, for pegging it down. Yep. And yeah. you have a uh, zip here. Oh, you access from that side. Access. Okay. And so now I have access to my controls, shower, and my soap is down here. There you go, all ready to go. Ta-da-da. So I put my towel on there, soap, have a quick shower and then climb back into the vehicle, okay. changed. It looks like a pretty ordinary wheel bin for trash. So this is uh, a trash? It's a design, yeah it is. But I don't just use it for trash. Anything that's smelly or dirty, I put in here. Cooking, cooking grids, if I filled a diesel and I've got a diesel funnel and it stinks, anything like that goes in here. Right. And for example, part of my shower are two shower mats. I shower mats. That's the kind of stuff I put in them. And of course, because it's got two large, very, very capacious pockets. You can put a lot of rubbish in this thing. That's, a, that's big. Interior time. Oh wow, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Whoa, there's that fire striker thing again. Yeah, the idea is that both the passenger and the driver know where it is and can grab it at any time. So hence that. And they, because they're so light in weight compared to a traditional fire extinguisher, I love them. I think they're a fantastic solution for vehicles. Yeah, I've, uh, I've only just seen them recently. So is this a, like a new thing or? Uh, it's been around for a while, but new in Australia. New in Australia, mm. okay. Let's stay on safety. Yes. Brilliant idea. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, well, we all know what that is. Mm. Break a windshield, cut a seatbelt. And uh, it's, uh, it's in there and everybody again knows where it is. Have you found a second use for that one yet? <laughs> no, I haven't found a first use and I hope I don't. Annoying passenger? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I'll behave. Annoying YouTuber. <laughs> I'll, I'll behave. <laughs> <laughs> I like where you mounted your nav system. I've been, been dying to try and find a, a height I can put mine on. Yeah. Uh, I'm using uh, ram mounts to mount it. And uh, the only failure on the canning stock route, this is the fourth mount I've put on this thing. They break. For fourth some reason, ram mount. I made, no, not ram mount, I had other mounts. Oh, okay. And eventually I said, no, no, forget about this. I actually need to go, the, go and do this properly. Yeah. I bought a ram mount. That is now good. So you're going other... from the $30 one to just Exactly, for mm. a, no, like a $7 one. Yeah. And I, and I modified a, a GoPro camera mount and it sheared, it snapped on the canning. Driving along and suddenly, boom, the whole thing lands Ooh. on the ground. Uh, there was only thing in the vehicle that we actually actually broke on the vehicle was that mounting. This should be good, mm. and uh, and I like it. it's quite close. When you're looking up, you're not blinded. You see, I yeah. find often if you're blinded here, you're blinded by all of this glare. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, you actually less. However, though, to work on it while driving, it's not in a great position because here, you you know you're. Your eyes, you can actually, if you're driving along a track and you want to do a, a, an adjustment, it's easier doing it here than it is doing it here. Look, yes. I'm going to ask you something about this HX1 because there's there's one thing. Uh, have you have you experienced a HN7? No. Okay. See, so the HN7 has this dimmer. The dimmer is brilliant. So, Hema, if you're listening, please do the software update so we can get it more dim, dimming out of the HX1 because I night. find when you dim it. It's yeah. too bright at night. It's too bright. It's too bright. Even at dim. I agree. And if you don't dim it, 
<laughs> oh, it's it's so disturbing. You might as well reverse yes. your light bar. You know? Exactly. <laughs> oh, let's go to a bulb up here. Uh, okay, that's a backup uh, inverter because I need inverters for my laptop. So if I lost my laptop on a long trip, I would have a big problem because I wouldn't be able to download footage. Yes. So that is a spare inverter. It's running at a small light at the moment. So if I turn that on, that little light, which is like three, five dollars from uh, IKEA, this little USB light uh, as a nav light actually works perfectly. Um, the and then a power unit box that I built myself. I have switches on the side of it for the nav, uh, turning on, off and on the nav and turning off my light that uh, yeah. I use for filming yeah. as well. And the Very switches nice. here. Keeping warm stuff. Uh, the microphone that I use for when I'm shooting travel stuff. And that is a torch. Um, more of a weapon than a torch, wow. really. Uh, that's made by um, LED Lenser. It's more of a weapon than anything else because actually around the camp, uh, it's too big for it to be practical. Mm. So, um, and it just sits there on charge and they made a very nice mount for it. So. Oh, wow. So it's, 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 it's a, that's their mount. It's a really nice mount. There's a torch company that knows how to make mounts. In fact, their mounts are wow. better than the torches. Okay. <laughs> This, this is going to be an expensive modified for me, I think. <laughs> Could be. The shopping list is going. <laughs> Got to show you this. Ah, oh, that's one we spoke about before. All right. There's my temperature of my fridge. It's now at uh, four degrees. My freezer is at minus four degrees. My battery voltage current is at 13.2 volts. Okay, so I can now set my freezer I'm not using. So I'm going to go down to, that's my freezer, the second one down. I'm actually going to... I'm not using it, so I'm going to turn it right up. It's now 10 degrees. So, and now if I want to set my fridge, I can now make it colder or warmer. And the bottom set is I can tell the unit when to turn off. And at the moment, it would automatically turn off at 10.7 volts. It will shut down at 10.7 volts. And there are two settings for the voltage at which it will actually shut down and stop. So you are controlling your fridge from that yeah, control? Yeah, you, you could hear the fridge going beep. Yeah, I could before, yeah. That Doing is, everything. That's awesome. Yeah. And there's a little signal on it so you know it's spinning. You can actually see when the, when the compressor is spinning, it actually shows the, uh, it actually shows it on that. You mentioned earlier the Department of Interior done this console. Uh, yes, and uh, it is a absolutely wonderful modification. Uh, I put my own switch box in there. They supply a switch box. I haven't decided what to put in there yet, but um, I designed this and built this part myself. You can get them to mm. do it. And uh, it just, just turns it into a nice SUV as opposed to a farm truck. May I suggest what to put here? I think I know what I'm going to put there, but what? please do. EGT, exhaust gas temperature. Just for when, say, you're doing a beach run like, like we did today, but you've got a long way to go, you can see if you're running too hot or not, and you can adjust your throttle a bit, adjust the gear. That's a good idea. Mm. Uh, I've had AGTs in various vehicles of mine. That's, a, that's quite a good call. Do you need one in a vehicle that's electronically controlled and is actually controlling the EGT itself by reducing fuel? When EGTs get very hot in these engines, yes, does yeah. it not reduce the fuel? Um, look, you have the Unichip Q4, so you have the EGT protection. Yes. Um, so you are protected, but it is still good to see how to hot know. it's running. Yeah. And it's also, I guess, an early sign of maybe, you know, there's something... Um, yeah, maybe that's not a bad call. Your UHF radio, what have we got here? Uh, the actual radio itself is in there. Oh, so everything is on your on handset. There. So everything is on my handset. That is a flash looking new HF. Cool. Hmm. Um, USB chargers. Um, water bottle. Two drink bottle holders. Okay. Um, is that a heat shield? Uh, no, it's an it's a it's a sound shield. A it's sound a, shield. Yes, it's made in South Africa. They don't bring them to Australia, which is a pity because it's a very nice product. It's made by Tackler, and it is a floor mat that covers the entire floor, it goes up the firewall, around the seats, underneath the seats, and it has a sound insulation pad built into it. Okay. This is a very very quiet car inside. Mm. Really quiet, considering what it is. And it's because of that, and plus I've, other, I've done other soundproofing as well. Something I'm very curious to, and I, I would like to know where you this. get that from, is, is that pocket on the side there. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I have some bad news. Mm -hmm. You can't get them. I'm trying to find them again. I bought this in Dubai. I'm trying to find, I know where I bought it. Their website's closed down. I've got somebody in Dubai trying to find some for me because I must have had 50 inquiries. Okay. Because I've seen my videos and they've seen this. Make it 51. Fine. Actually, make it 52. I know someone else who's pretty careful. Well, you one. see what I mean. So, and it is, and it is, it is seriously, seriously a nice piece. It's just, it makes an enormous difference. And we all know, 70 drivers, this is a narrow, not very comfortable part mm -hmm. of the car, and that solves the problem. Yep. So it is just, um, it just Velcros down. It clips in the trunk, and I put Velcro in the bottom, and um, I'm trying to get. For a, you know, just imagine a long drive, you know, thousands of kilometers. Oh, yeah. It's... It makes a big, big difference. Mm. You know, just, it just, just does. Engine bay time, Andrew. Yeah, I decided not to put a battery in the engine bay because the trip is so great and you, there's plenty of space to put it. So I think if there's an alternative, do it. Because uh, I, yeah, I just think it is. And also with this 2017 model, you have to, do, you have to move so many things mm. to get the second battery in that it, uh, it's quite complicated. I know this vehicle's chipped because you've gone to the same place yes. I have. Yes. Um, boys is it P2P? Right. Uni chip Q4? Yes. You have the file map select in your vehicle? Yes. Okay. Um, what are you, do you, have you got specific tunes on yours? Uh, I think we, they followed your map, your recommendations. Okay. And I find that if I'm driving around town, I have it on number two. If I'm driving on a beach like this, I had it on number two. I had lots of power when I needed it, which was yes. really, really nice. Uh, but if I'm on a long run, I turn it off. I get slightly better economy if I turn it off on a long run, the whole day at 110. Okay, so you go down to map five, which is I go is to, map to map five, and I find it gets slightly better because you don't need that instant power, that, that mm. magic that the Q, Q4 does for the vehicle mm. when you're on a long run. That's interesting, yeah. So I just turn it off, I want better economy, and I get slight, it's not a, it's not a deal the, breaker, but it is yeah. better economy. Fifth breathers. Yes. And also locker breathers. So the uh, Perth Diesel Performance put those in for me. They, uh, they're breathers for the, for the lockers and the, the, the differentials. And they put in a dual fuel filtering system for me as well. Yes, of course. Yep. Which I think, well, I was told, in fact, you, you, were the, you, you and one other person were saying, you need to do this. It's, it's an insurance it's, policy, a yeah. cheap insurance and policy. And so I did it straight For away. your $10,000 or $16,000 motor if you conk everything. Yeah. Hmm. Oil catch can. Got one. Oil got, also got it from PDP. Okay. Yeah. I put that in myself about six weeks ago. Other than that, have you done anything else? No, and I probably won't. Yes. I've been asked, are you changing the exhaust? And my response to that is, why? And you have the DPF thing as well. Which you don't even notice is even working. Only mm. once have I actually seen, oh, it's working. Only once has the engine actually started to idle very fast and do it. Yes. But it does its, it does its trick while you're driving. Mm. It did it this morning. Because when I got in, it said BDF3 on the dashboard, and I just drove and ignored it. And before I arrived here, I thought, oh, I wonder what it is now. It went down to one. It does it while you're driving. Sorry, you don't yeah, notice it. It's done the burn, yeah. It's done the burn. Um, but, but my point was, you can't change the exhaust legally anyway, because you have a DPF. Oh, OK. So, so I mean, that, that's another reason why well, you're, you're sticking with the standard exhaust. And there's, I think there's... a lot of people would say, yeah, you can't do it for uh, legal, legal wise, but also, well, well, who cares? Let's increase mm. the performance of, of the vehicle. And I'm saying, okay, well, I could take it out and then increase the performance by how much? By spending a lot of money. I don't see the, if I'm there not is, racing, it's, I'm not building a racing car. There is no real gain. What is the real gain? Yeah, it's an overland vehicle as well. Yeah. Um, and, and speaking to, to the boys, you know, they've done your chip work. Okay. Uh, PDP guys, they can get the same figures with or without the DPF exhaust on. So there is no point. Q&A time. And because it's uh, Andrew, glass bottle coke. Ah, you know me well. I do. Oh, glass and cold. Yes, very cold. Cheers. Cheers. Ah. Ah. That is definitely the best coke in a glass bottle. Absolutely. Okay, Q&A. Now, we've covered a lot of stuff talking about this vehicle. 
Um, so I think maybe we should talk about you and your channel. Oh yeah, bit. okay. I've been doing this for a while. Actually, actually, uh, I started in 1996. I started writing books. Because I'd been in the film industry, the, the four-wheel drive books kind of moved into, I started making films. And uh, my love of four-wheel driving and my vocation as a filmmaker coincided probably 2000, 2001, somewhere around there. And I started and I did my first TV series. And I've done nine TV series have been broadcast in various countries around the world. The subject matter is four-wheel drive. It's actually called four-wheel drive. And it's, uh, it's all about what we love about doing this. I particularly love going to amazing places. Mm. That's my, and that's what this truck is all about. It's, it's all about finding incredible places. Because I actually tell people, and I say to them, I don't like camping. And that's quite a surprise to people. And it, because I don't like camping for the sake of camping. I like okay. camping because you, by doing camping and four-wheel drive, you can find places like this. Okay, so, so your perception of camping is, is something that allows you to go further and further and further to yes. places like this. Yes, <clears throat> I've never got okay. to a camping site by choice. Okay. I might go there on the route to somewhere, but that would never be my destination. All right, so in other words, if, if there was a spot local to, say, Perth, where you know just off the highway you can go to a great camping spot, you wouldn't, you wouldn't just go camping? I might, but that's not my big thing. My big okay. thing is finding amazing places that are inaccessible. I might go camping in a place like this, Mm. Bit of four-wheel driving up the beach, not too many people around, then it's then I enjoy camping. Okay. Yeah. But it's the camping, when I say camping, I'm talking about putting up tents and rigging oh, up yeah. this and <laughs> that doesn't interest me that much. And your vehicle is equipped for mainly overnight stays, right? Yes. So you're you're constantly on the move. Most of my trips I am, you know, and that's I think what my preferred way of traveling is that I rarely will I stay in one place more than three days. That's pretty rare. Mm. And I notice in Australia it's also very much that doing the track is very much a thing, which is not common in many places. It's not common, for example, in, in South Africa, it's more the destination than the track. Here it's as much the track as anything else, just doing a route and experiencing it's a piece a, of the country. It's an interesting point, yeah, because, I mean, you've just done the Holland track recently. You've done the, the Canning Stock route. And, yes. I mean, these are tracks you do them because it's a track to do. That's what you're saying, right? And that's why I did the Canning yes. Stock route, because, and, and Holland. Mm. It, there's a track. It looked nice. Do it. And that's, yeah, you're right. I didn't want to go to Wiluna which is the last point on the Canning Stock Route. <laughs> Who would want to go to Maluna unless you were working there or had family there? But the track ends up in Waluna. But getting to Waluna over 18 days on the track itself was magnificent. From Horse Creek to Waluna. Yeah. The vehicle now, this vehicle is destined for some... Uh, I'm planning to drive Alaska to Cape Horn in 2019. So this year I'm driving from Byron Bay right across the red center of Australia to the furthest most western point in Western Australia. Steep I'm doing that in, in May this year. And uh, then I've got something in Africa and then I'm going to the United States and this vehicle is being shipped to the United States. I'll do something in the United States, probably Canada actually. And then I'm driving this truck from Alaska to Cape Horn in 2019. Wow, that'd be pretty epic. It's epic, but it's perfect for it. Because yeah. I'll be driving most days and it's, it, it actually, it has the range, it carries enough water, it's comfortable, it's not too big. It, it actually is, you know, the only thing is that if I need a spare part in a hurry and it's particular to the 70 series, I'm gonna have a problem. <laughs> Specific question, uh, and this is to help um, your viewers and my viewers out who are looking at getting into full driving. I'm yes. just talking overlanding, full driving, just the whole thing. Yeah. As it is, the newbies, they wanna do something to the vehicle. What's the first thing you tell them? And it doesn't have to be a modification. I just, your first words, say if someone came up to you right now. I think that's said, quite easy, actually. Uh, most vehicles are not supplied with tires suitable for doing anything but maybe a good gravel road. And uh, then when they go wrong, it's pretty catastrophic. You can be easily left stranded with bad tires. Get tires suitable for the job. That yep. would be the very first thing I would do. 
with our vehicles, there's a lot of luxury items on there. When I mean luxury, it's stuff you don't need to have, but it makes the whole travel experience a lot better and because you're spending time out there and, and whatnot, it's, it makes it more comfortable, right? What is one of the things on your vehicle out of your luxury items that you would not give up for anything? You pick one, only one. Only one? Only one. But how do you uh, define luxury item? Uh, okay, you can have shower. That's a luxury. That's a big luxury. That's a big luxury. You can sleep on your roof. You have big a, luxury. You have a big awning. Big luxury. Two fridges. Big luxury. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop there. <laughs> I'd probably have a fridge would be the last thing I would give up probably. Because there's nothing better than a nice cold Coke or a nice cold beer when you arrive at your destination. That would be one of the last things I would, I would give up, I think. Okay. I'll leave you have two things. I want to know what the second thing is. You're going to try and catch me out here because you've probably got a really good one. I just want to know if it's the shower, the shade, or the rooftop. Shade is easy to make. Tarpaulin, pegs, a few poles, you can make shade. Rooftop tent, definitely not. I love sleeping on the ground. I have no... Do my Africa trips, most of the time I'm on the ground. Uh, animals all around me, don't worry. It doesn't worry me at all. So you don't need to be up there. So no, uh, rooftop tent, no, definitely not. Um, shower, that is a... F Actually, you're right. I wouldn't give up my shower. I yeah. give up most things. It is so nice that I actually wouldn't give it up. I got there, but I had to interrogate him. No, I've tasted it. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I would. I would. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's fantastic. That, that, that's, that's going to be the next thing I'm looking at, mm. is just the shower, you know. Look, with my style of camping, which is similar to your style of, of traveling and camping, I find it most difficult after the second day of not having a shower. Once I get past that, I can go two weeks without a shower. Interesting. As disgusting as that sounds, I can go two weeks without a shower. Um, look, I will use the ocean, um, but I'm talking no fresh water. Uh, I'll have a warm bucket and I'll wash myself, but a proper shower or a proper soak. It's funny you should say that. Day three is you hate yourself on day three. Day four is a little easier. It is, yeah. And then it actually, yeah. yeah. My longest trip between any hot uh, any any fresh water at all was eight days uh, 1987 through the Kalahari and um, we were loaded with fuel and we could carry very little water and I remember yeah day three is horrible day four is okay day five six seven and eight and it's fine <laughs> it's just the same so. <laughs> <laughs> you just everybody gets used to it and yeah. but you're right yeah well look Andrew we could we can bang on for ages um, this video is already really long so I think um, Now's the time to, to give us a plug to your channel. Forex Overland uh, is the name. So it's YouTube forward slash Forex Overland. And um, you will find on there lots of long distance travel. I believe I'm unique in that I go to many countries around the world and drive vehicles. I haven't seen another channel like mine. Um, and I drive all kinds of vehicles. I do have some favorites and I have some that I don't like at all. Um, but uh, my videos have been, uh, my early videos on my channel were shot in 2006 and I produce a, close to 100 videos a year, not unlike yourself. And I've got these, I mentioned them earlier, these very exciting trips planned all over the world. You want to see more, there is a subscribe link right here to Forex Overland. There's my channel up here and there's another video down there which we shot right here if you want to check it out. What, there? Oh, you're here? Or here? Oh, there. Here? There. There? There. Okay. Oh, there it is. Good. <laughs> Click. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Good a pleasure to have you on. Right. Finally on Modified. <laughs> See you guys. Cheers.